Welcome to Performance Upgrades. I'm your host, Dave Moss. The show is brought to you by SportBikeRanch.com. Performance parts and professional advice. We're back again with our Project Jixa 750, slowly getting her ready for the track. Today we're using the Galfa products again. We are going to install the Superbike Wave Rotors. As we are going to the track and as seasoned track veterans, we want the best possible braking performance we can have. So we're gonna install these rotors. So we'll take you through the process of what's involved now. Realize that in terms of removing wheels, we already have a video for that. So search on the throttle and you'll be able to watch the videos in terms of the front wheel removal. Now there's many ways to do this, but in order to remove the rotor, obviously you have to loosen the bolts. I'd prefer to do it this way, where I go ahead, use my Motion Pro T-handle, and break, just break the bolt free. Do no more than that. Continue that all the way around the wheel, then go to the other side. I'll be turning the wheel physically by hand to get to the bolts I need to. These are tight. Now that all the rotor bolts are loose, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the wheel. And again, to remind you, if you're not sure how to do that, go to onthethrottle.com and we have videos there that will help you with that task. Okay, quick set change. We brought the toolbox forward. Next task, remove all the rotor bolts and the rotor, then flip the wheel over and do the same thing. Motion Pro T-handle works great for this task. We've moved our wheel over to one side simply because the next thing I personally always do, there's always a lot of Loctite put on the bolt. So I'm gonna take a wire brush and scrub these bolts down because we're gonna put more Loctite, blue Loctite on the bolts to put them back into the carrier. So great step to clean all the excess Loctite off so you get a really good solid Loctite seal when you put the bolts back in. Now don't spend hours doing this and don't even bother with a dentist pick trying to get every bit out. This is the one I cleaned and all I've done is really just take all the big chunks of Loctite off of it and this is one of the, weird, one of the ones I've yet to clean. So two, three minutes just with a really coarse wire brush, that's good enough. Now that we've cleaned everything up and we're pretty much ready to go, the next thing to do is make sure that you know the rotational direction of your wheel. Every wheel has an arrow on it, whether it's cast or engraved. Now on the Suzuki GSX-R wheel, the rotation of direction is on the left side of the front wheel. Why do we need to know that? Well, in this case with the Galfa Superbike rotors, there's one for the left and one for the right. So it's much easier to start with the wheel facing the direction you know it's traveling. So in this instance, I need to go to the Galfa packet that has the left Superbike rotor, take it out and install it. All right, now that we've got this in hand, you only handle rotors with gloves on. No bare skin, we don't want oil all over them. You'll also notice there is an arrow for rotation of direction. Well, because we know the wheel is left side up, the left side rotor has the arrow matching in the same direction. So that we know when we put this on, the two are pointing the same way. Obviously, if this was the other way around, this rotor would be pointing in the wrong direction. So these are directional, put them on the right way. Every bolt needs to be Loctited into position. Once Loctited, they also need to be torqued to the correct spec. Don't be frugal with Loctite on brake rotor bolts, but by the same token, don't be excessive. Just make sure all of the thread has it. We use a Loctite stick because it's easier. That way you can roll it around rather, as opposed to having liquid. I find this much easier to use, but pick your own. Once you have the Loctite on, Go ahead, put the bolt in, start the thread, a couple turns, 
move on to the next bolt, go all the way around the wheel, tighten this side down and snug it up, and then get the torque wrench. When you're done, then go to the other side of the wheel and do exactly the same again. It's really important when you put this rotor on top because it's a wave rotor and it's got peaks and troughs. When you lay this one down, you must look down and you cannot have peaks exactly in the same position. Now, if, if by some remote chance all the peaks line up, then the carrier itself must be offset to the carrier underneath. Now, what does that mean? That means that the spokes on the carrier must come in the middle or somewhere not lined up with each other. So if you have any questions about that, simply laying it down, looking at it right away, you will see if you turn the rotor and take it through one revolution, some positions it will be overlapping and some it will not. Like right there is perfect. If I look straight down, the carrier button is right in the middle between these two. So that's where I want it to be. And we are very slightly offset in terms of the peaks and the troughs. So this looks like a really good position. So same thing, lots of blue Loctite, tighten them down and torque them to spec. Having laid out some blue towels underneath our rotor the next job and it's much easier to do it like this get some contact cleaner or preferably brake parts cleaner get a clean towel and wipe the surface both sides of the rotor because from this point on we'll just be lifting the wheel into place so clean the rotor while you're here on both sides thoroughly with contact cleaner or preferably brake parts cleaner Now everything is tightened down to spec, time to reinstall the wheel. If you're not familiar with how to do that, go to onthethrottle.com. We have videos there that will help you with wheel removal and wheel installation. Okay, our front wheel is back in. Our rotors are installed, everything's been torqued to spec, so we're good to go. We'd like to point out that we have put in the 1300 brake pad series matched to the superbike rotors as we are going to the track. And that's always a good idea if you're going to do something as substantial as we are with a full brake overhaul in the front. So we're looking forward to going to the track and getting vastly improved braking performance, especially the progressive braking on the lever. As always, we'd love to thank you for watching and we'll see you next time on Performance Upgrades.